previous videos covered the cataclysmic Lisbon earthquake in 1755 and Day of Darkness in 1780. Biblical and millennial scholars were now awaiting the fulfillment of the next prophetic verse from the New Testament. The stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Revelation 6.13 This too was to occur, it happened on the night of November 12th and 13th, 1833. As with the earthquake and the dark day, this too was an unimaginably dramatic event. The following historic account is posted on the National Aeronautical and Space Administration's page about the Leonids meteor showers. On the night of November 12-13, 1833, a tempest of falling stars broke over the Earth. The sky was scored in every direction with shining tracks and illuminated with majestic fireballs. At Boston, the frequency of meteors was estimated to be about half that of flakes of snow in an average snowstorm. Their numbers were quite beyond counting, but as it waned, a reckoning was attempted, from which it was computed, on the basis of that much diminished rate, that 240,000 must have been visible during the nine hours they continued to fall. Agnes Clerks, Victorian astronomy writer. In the American Journal of Science, Professor Olmsted included a report from a correspondent in Bowling Green, Missouri, as follows. Though there was no moon, when we first observed them, their brilliancy was so great that we could, at times, read common-sized print without much difficulty. And the light which they afforded was much wider than that of the moon, in the clearest and coldest night, when the ground is covered with snow. The air itself, the face of the earth as far as we could behold it, all the surrounding objects, and the very countenances of men, wore the aspect and hue of death, occasioned by the continued, pallid glare of these countless meteors, which in all their grandeur flamed lawless through the sky. There was scarcely a space in the firmament which was not filled at every instant with these falling stars. Volume 25, 1834, page 382. We even have this account from a young Abraham Lincoln. When I was a young man in Illinois, I boarded for a time with a deacon of the Presbyterian Church. One night I was roused from my sleep by a rap at the door, and I heard the deacon's voice exclaiming Arise, Abraham, the day of judgment has come. I sprang from my bed and rushed to the window, and saw the stars falling in great showers. It was also witnessed by the famed abolitionist, Frederick Douglass, who at the time was a 15-year-old slave living in Maryland. I witnessed this gorgeous spectacle, and was awestruck. The air seemed filled with bright descending messengers from the sky. It was about daybreak when I saw this sublime scene. I was not without the suggestion, at that moment that it might be the harbinger of the coming of the Son of Man, and in my then state of mind I was prepared to hail him as my friend and deliverer. I had read that the stars shall fall from heaven, and they were now falling. I was suffering very much in my mind, I was looking away to heaven for the rest denied me on earth. Here is another eyewitness account. Being up this morning, I witnessed one of the most grand and alarming spectacles which ever beamed upon the eye of man. The light in my room was so great that I could see the hour of the morning by my watch which hung over my mantel, and supposing there was a fire near at hand, probably on my own premises, I sprung to the window, and behold, the stars or some other bodies presenting a fiery appearance were descending in torrents as rapid and as numerous as I ever saw flakes of snow, or drops of rain, in the midst of a storm. Joseph Smith, the founder of the LDS, or Mormon Church, was also a witness of this event, here is his account. About 4 o'clock a.m. I was awakened by Brother Davis knocking at my door, and calling me to arise and behold the signs in the heavens. I arose, and to my great joy, beheld the stars fall from heaven like a shower of hailstones, a literal fulfillment of the word of God, as recorded in the Holy Scriptures. The co-founder of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Ellen G. White later said that the starry spectacle was, quote, the last of the signs, which were promised by the Savior as tokens of his second advent, from the great controversy, p. 333, which appears on the AdventistReview.org website. Interestingly, the Adventist Review also mentions the Reverend William Miller, 
who was also a co-founder of the Adventist Church and a prominent figure in the Millennial Movement. Here's the passage. On the night the stars fell William Miller was a 51-year-old lecturer unwittingly starting a movement that gained steam until the great disappointment 11 years later, when the hopes of his followers that Jesus would return on October 22, 1844, were dashed. As we'll later learn, Reverend Miller's extensive study of the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, led him to the conclusion that Jesus would return in 1844. As we'll also explore later, it so happens the Baha'i faith was founded in Persia in 1844, and its founder was born on November 12, the date when the night of the starfall began. He would have been 16 years old that day.